My name is Justine. And, um, what else? And <laughs> I don't know what else <laughs> to say. <laughs> You are a very strong woman. Uh, I just want you to fight, Justine, and know that we are surrounding you and we are loving you through this. I am just extremely proud of you, and I love you so much. And she's gonna beat this. I have no doubt in my mind. My name is Justine, and this is my story. My thoughts, um, it's just like, I'm just gonna go by my day, and I really don't have any thoughts if my hair starts falling out, my hair starts falling out. Yeah. That's it. So how it all started, Man, I want to say I kind of was having migraines um, back in 2019. I normally don't get migraines. I'm like, okay, this this is something, and I'm like, oh, am I stressed? And normally, I'm a I'm always anxious about certain things, and I uh, but it, migraines was just a weird thing, and I was feeling nauseous. Like normally, I'm cleaning or doing something active and then uh, somehow I get this sharp pain. Then back in 2020, um, it just progressed into something very more aggressive. Justine is not a, a person that wants to attract attention at all. She's very dismissive. She is downplaying situations. I don't believe that she realized the severity of what was happening until it got extremely awful. So even at work, when I'm by myself, if I sit down for too long and when I stand up, I'm a little dizzy. And then all of a sudden I feel like my legs were just spaghetti. I don't wanna fall. So I kind of lowered myself to the ground. My head started banging. You know one of those like inception, like those twisted rooms? Yeah. That's where I felt like. The bathroom's right there. I started crawling to the bathroom. All I wanted to do was go in the sink and just splash water all over my face. And I kind of picked myself up, my legs, I, I able to feel them again and I put water in my face and I'm like what just happened I called my friend I'm like hey can you not tell mom this <laughs> and, and and she's like can't tell mom what and my mom was she had me on speaker and then my mom was right there and I'm like oh no so I had an episode at work and I can't drive I, I, I can't I don't want to risk it. And she's like, okay, I'll come pick you up. And, and then my mom got a little mad. I mean, I'm like, yeah. I didn't want to worry her, but, because I know when she's worried and then I get worried, I'm like, okay, I don't need this right now emotionally. Because I just, I'm exhausted, restless nights for six months. has to be the neck and I, I bought a neck pillow like a pillow specifically for neck injury nothing didn't do anything good and so I crawl up into this position where I'm like I can't I'm trying to calm this pain down but it was just it I I didn't know at that point to actually make this pain go away it wasn't until she received the second COVID shot that her comorbidities or the underlying problems that she had really manifested themselves to the point that she collapsed. 
I don't remember much what was going on around me. And I know my mom was freaking out. She wanted to take me to the hospital, but I told her, I'm like, mom, I can't get up. She ended up calling the ambulance and they came. All they gave her was pain medication. They gave her morphine for the pain. They never did a diagnostic study, nothing. Um, she was scheduled to see the neurologist in about a month. We pushed the appointment sooner. The doctor did some studies. Okay, doctor, so what, uh, what's the prognosis? What, what's the next step? What are we gonna do? And he decided we're gonna do an MRI of the brain with and without contrast. Uh, hi, Claudia, I just got the report of the MRI. I guess it was done today. Um, I left you a message earlier. Um, you, your daughter has a problem with the brain. I mean, there's, a, there's something there that needs to go to the hospital, it needs to go to the emergency room, and needs to be admitted. Uh, so if you haven't done yet, give me a call. Scary, yes, finding out, but at the same time, I'm like, okay, if I have to go through surgery, then so be it, because if this is a solution to getting rid of this pain, I'm all for it. I remember waking up. The first question I asked, did I finally sleep? I'm able to move my head around. I'm like, I don't feel the pain. Like I felt a sense of the weight off my, my head. I just felt like I was the same again. I just had a smile on my face and I'm like, wow, I finally rested. Well, that was a very stressful moment after, because I was just meeting all these doctors and the possibilities of, you know, uh, what is, what are the options that I have if we were malignant. At one point, I was I had to fill out my EDD forms. One of the neurosurgeons already put the diagnosis, and we didn't know what it was. And then when my mom pointed that out, she started crying. And I, at that point, I was just like, you know, I, I kind of felt that. I kind of prepared myself. I was like, you know what? I have a feeling it is cancer. And so it was like... Yes, it's, it's shocking to find out the truth, like knowing the truth, and it's like, wow, this is so surreal now. I'm fighting a brain cancer called anaplastic astrotoma, which is a stage three. Every day chemo, 120 milligrams of Timidor. I, I did that every day for 46 days. And then for radiation, it was just five days of the week. But man, it was just draining. I was losing hair towards the end. Radiation being over, and okay, what's the next step now? Got the MRI done, it was, it was still questionable. The oncologist recommended to continue with chemo, just chemo, double the dose. So 220 milligrams of Temidor, five days out of the week. This is at every 28 day cycle. I didn't want cancer to just take over my life. Pero ahorita estamos toda la familia más unida que nunca, porque todos venimos a apoyar a quien queremos mucho que ellos tienen.